just got the hashtag announcement from KG Tropicals. Those guys are coming over. There's the Zen Ginger with the hashtag tool. Thank you so much, John, for your continued encouragement and support. Um, I'm going to get rid of this echo. Yeah, okay. Say good night, John. You guys are rolling in here. Wow. Good to see you guys. Hashtag tools. And those that came in before there was a hashtag. Tool, by the way, that's uh, John and Lisa, KG Tropical's new series, Tanks of Our Lives. Um, it's a dramatization of fish keeping. You'll want to check those out. Susan for SLC Aquatics, hardworking mod in the house. Hello and heart back at you. Q Aquatics in the house. Susie Q knocking it out of the park with her content. Susie, your last video, the one I saw, the premiere with the YouTube tools uh, was very helpful to me. I'm sure many others. And I'm so envious of your ability to work with the green screen. Um, I keep putting off learning how to do that. And I think I'm going to pull the trigger on a green screen. I really like the one you had, the folding one. <laughs> And I think if I, I'm never going to try to fold that thing up. I'm going to unfold it once and hang it where, <laughs> where it goes. It's going to be more permanent than temporary. But that was cool. Candy in the house. Kaler's Aquatics, how do? Candy, I'm going to talk about those goldfish. They've stolen my heart. That's what they've done. Pet Zotics in the house. I'm doing good. River Wife's in the house. She's loving on the fish, fam. We've had a rough couple of days, fam. Um, we had to put my dad in the hospital, so we're spending some some time out there with him. Uh, it's good to be reminded how fragile life is and how sometimes we can take people for granted. So I would say those are benefits and positives. I'll keep you guys posted as much as I can. Chewy's in the house. Moonstone KK. Angelfish Haven, that's a new name to me, maybe. I think so. Welcome. I, I think we're new. Nice to meet you. Aspie and Aqua has been doing some encouraging in the comment section. Thank you so much. Punchy Pants is in the house. Thank you, Pam. I appreciate that. Boss Hogs here, too. Hey, boss. Frankie Fins, what's up? Ann Thornton, welcome back. Oh, uh, Sand Creek Aquatics, Anthony's Fishy Friends. Oh, what a beautiful group of people. 75 watching. Thank you guys for coming over from KG Tropicals and dropping in before. Um, we've got a good show lined up. Redfish, Bluefish. How's it going? Uh, let's see. It is, yeah, 1033. Boy, John is prompt. He pulls the plug right on time. I appreciate that. We got a bunch of folks in here. Uh, Theroon. I know I butchered that. I apologize, but welcome. Ohoy. FNS Fish Room. Aquaballs. Good to see you. What live stream did I see you on recently, Aquaballs? That was quite a fish setup you had there. It was nice. Blake's Aquatics. Good day. Randy Cornell. Frankie White. Scott's Aquatics. My goodness, L and M Aquatic, Ellen uh, L and M's Exotic Tanks. Vern Ellis, you guys make sure you check each other out over there in the chat. There's a great bunch of people in here. Crypto Aquatics, fantastic. Ten thirty four, seventy seven people watching. Let's see if we can get some lights turned on. I don't know if we can. We're gonna give it a go. Of course not. Not this time. Meltdown happening. Okay. Trust me, the lights are on. We're going with the lights on. No special graphics tonight. Come on. Mm. 
Wow. OBX to the rescue. You're going to get me back, and we're going to leave it alone. Okay. Standing by. There I am. Not going to leave you again, guys. Kaler's Aquatics. Nope. Nope. River Sun's back in the Great White North doing uh, Great White North things. The Zen Ginger's in the house. Punchy art, I think, is what those uh, emoticons mean. Science Gal's here. Third watch. Nice to see John this week. He looks better with Lisa, but it'll be great to see both of them next week. Fingers crossed. Well, I concur. I told him as much when I was up there. Lisa definitely adds a dimension to the show. I think John and Lisa are better than John or Lisa. So, yeah, we'll be glad to see those guys back together again next week. Okay, let's get some chum in the water. We got some acclimation going on. And Thornton correcting me. The Great White North is Canada, not Alaska. Um, I think I got a word from the Arctic Circle that it was definitely the Great White North. <laughs> Precious Tranquility is in the house. Um, Precious Tranquility uh, was able to supply me with the goldfish that we're talking about that have stolen our hearts. Thank you very much, Amanda. Um, make sure we do uh, some acclamation here. You guys make these new names feel welcome. We're a friendly bunch around here. It's a safe space. We're glad you decided to spend some time with us, and you're welcome to hang out for as long as you like. I hope I get to know all of you, you guys a little better as we go along. We're all new at some point, right? We're all fry in the community tank at one point. Oh, yes, Ann Thornton. I know SCTV. John Candy was one of my favorites. Yeah, Rick Moranis. Uh, definitely good day, eh? You hoser. F very familiar. Loved it. Fantastic. Deb Hall D. How are you doing? And The Pond Life. You are fairly new. Glad you're back. Good to see you. Let's get some chum on the water. Let's get something to talk about tonight. Uh, I think it's going to be pretty interesting. Here you go. Now think about this. We've got a lot of experience in the house. Look at this chat. I'm looking at the chat. I've seen a lot of fish keeping experience. I've been keeping fish for over 50 years. So I'm not an expert at anything, but I've seen a lot of things come down the pike. So the question for the chum tonight is, what have you seen change in the fish keeping hobby since you started keeping fish? What's changed? Uh... I think it'll be interesting what we come up with. What's the first thing that comes to your mind when you when you think what's changed in the hobby since I started keeping fish? Matter of fact, let me while I'm waiting on a response here in chat, let me grab a book to show you guys. Filters. Does everybody have this book? Hey, King and Queen Cichlids, what's up? Welcome aboard, guys. Good to see you. Mark Hill, filters and substrate. Hey, Steve Tendrich. The amount of algae I grew. <laughs> so have you become a better algae farmer? Uh, I know I have. No fish bowls. Yeah, out. Yeah, Q Aquatics has got this one. So what's cool is that this was a childhood gift. I want to say this is a 1960s edition of this book. The Ennis book, it's commonly called. Let's see if I can get a copyright date here. It's the 19th edition by the Metaframe Corporation. That was my first aquarium. It was manufactured by Metaframe. You remember the metal frame, maybe even a slate bottom. Oh, here we go. Yeah, 1966. Copyright 1966. Originally copyrighted. Copyright in 1938. This book stands the test of time. A wider selection of fish. That's right, Scott. By far, they keep coming in. One of the things that was amazing about this book was the color plates in the back. It was just like the Sears catalog for fish keepers. You just 
perused those pages and dreamed about having those in your tank one day. So, and they talked about different fish keeping techniques. You know, what was the deal at the time? Um, I've got, I've got this, um, like more of a periodical soft cover called the aquarium. Uh, it looks like it retailed for 60 cents and this is the number one edition. This is the first time this was, I don't even know if it was published again. San Francisco Bay food was still a thing or was a thing all the way back then. This is another Metaframe publication. 1973 I think this actually came in an aquarium kit that I bought and they, they they gave you a sample of the first one hoping you would subscribe this might have been a cover from it yep with that lady down there just so happy about filling that aquarium up with the metal frame gonna add some plants Got lots of fish in the bag. That's going to be a community tank for sure. Yeah, the old kissing garami. Neat stuff. Uh, there was no YouTubers growing the hobby. That's for sure, Deb Hall D. Um, the, the filter, I went, my first aquarium had the little box filter in the corner, air operated. But then my next filter was the first Dynaflow the first hang on the back that I'm aware of in the United States. And that thing had so many parts. Servicing it was really not fun. And about that time, we in my first grade classroom, whoo, man, that was a long time ago. We set up an aquarium. It was one of those meta frames, metal frames. And then, thanks, Candy. Let's get those likes up. 105 watching. Wow, thank you guys for dropping in. One of the things we were taught to do, and this was this was standard, this was the best practice, is we would line the bottom of the tank before first thing with newspaper. We'd stuff newspaper down in the tank, several sheets, have it come up the sides three or four inches, and then we would put sand on top of the newspaper. So we had a sand substrate with newspaper under it, and then you could always kind of read the paper when you walked by the tank. It was always there. And then the, the annual maintenance on the tank was to take the fish out and to take all of the, the substrate out with the paper, just gather the paper up, take it out, start over. Uh, and then when we stopped doing that, and I guess it was about the time with the advent of the undergravel filter, they were, I remember when we didn't do that anymore and there were undergravel filters available. So I think it was about the same time we used undergravel filters and used those things for years until all of a sudden they disappeared. You couldn't find an undergravel filter. And I think they're still rare today, although coming back now I see them in the store uh, from time to time. Uh, a better understanding of how to care. Yes, every day, bro. Scott's got it. What's changed is that we now have access to the resources that teach us how to better care for the fish. We have more species information, species accounts, more emphasis on biotope tanks instead of the room decoration, hodgepodge community tank. You know, the more of a community it was, the better. I think the specialty fish keeper was an outlier. Uh, there may have been some cichlid breeders before, uh, African cichlids were a craze. I remember people keeping a lot of Oscars and Jack Dempsey's and, uh, angel fish, and those could be bred, but you were considered an advanced hobbyist, uh, in the seventies, if you could breed one of those. So that was pretty cool. And now with uh, I think the internet is a great way to exchange information with the internet. We can tune in and figure out just about how to keep best keep and even spawn most of the fish that are available to us. And okay. Pet Zotics, Excellent point. He says spouses are getting more involved in the hobby. So true. Instead of it being, uh, 
one or the other. I think nowadays, maybe then, I don't recall in the 70s, my mom always helped me get the aquarium started. So I thought she was the aquarium person that I took after. But now I think maybe there are more males involved in the hobby, at least on YouTube. And I wish we could uh, uh, balance that because there's some excellent female aquarists. Rachel O'Leary jumps to the front of my mind. Definitely Lisa of KG Tropicals. Uh, just a fantastic different perspective yeah so it's really cool that spouses are getting involved uh, partners significant others and of all genders so I thought maybe some of us could do throwback ideas and remember what it was like back in the day It was interesting also as I took that idea and, and overlaid it to Project Piaba, who's been in the field collecting data for 27 years. So I wonder, I'd love to have that conversation with Scott Dow, the director of Project Piaba. What's, what's changed at Project Piaba? I know they've gotten uh, veterinary science involved. Do Dr. Uh, Timothy Miller Morgan goes down and helps out with Project Piaba, and they've started recently. I mean, this is like uh, news, kind of. They're, they're doing training for best handling practices to make sure the fish get to us as healthy as possible. Oh, KG Tropicals weighs in. He says, the biggest difference is huge tanks are way more common. Back in 93, when, when he started, you were legit if you had a 55, absolutely. Okay, so, so he's dated that. That was definitely true in the 70s when I started. Now, that remained true until the early 90s. Yeah, and now we've got an opportunity to get a large tank. As a matter of fact, John's going to help me get a large tank. And now that I have these goldfish, we feel like we're getting closer. We've got some structural changes to make to our fish studio. And uh, those guys will be getting a bigger house. King and Queen Cichlids said back in the day, you actually had to research to get information instead of it being in the palm of your hand. Absolutely. And by research, for me in a small town, that might mean going to a university and asking permission to use the library and then getting someone to volunteer to assist you in finding the information that you needed about a particular fish or the maintaining a particular habitat. So... That's different than turning on the internet, for sure. The Pond Life says back in the day it was more about having a tank with fish, and now it's turned into having lots of tanks, and in the hundreds, sometimes breeding is more common. Yeah, uh, the multi-tank addiction is a thing now. Uh, I guess it could have always been. I don't remember being affected by it until uh, adulthood. I guess it just uh, it was just the availability of of funds and aquariums and things to put in the aquariums and permission to to do that. <laughs> River wife throwing back. She's recalling the Dewey Decimal System. Oh man, and that card catalog, right? The card catalog was set up with the the cat formula. What did CAT stand for? Author and title were AT. I guess C was category. Yeah, so you had the library was laid out by categories, authors, and titles. You had to first figure out one or the other <laughs> and where that section of books was. And if you were fortunate enough to have a title, then you could pinpoint it with the Dewey Decimal System. Yeah, it was accepted to have one or more tanks, but it just wasn't common. When I was a kid with an aquarium in my area, I was not aware of a fish room. What was occasionally happening, though, were people um, installing small ponds in their yard and putting tropical fish in the ponds and then winterizing the ponds and taking the fish out to overwinter them indoors. That happened a few times, and goldfish ponds were kind of in vogue. I remember people laying down some cement and getting the bright blue paint, the waterproof paint, the paint over it, and just the regular comets and, and uh, 
Well, what's this? Is it Shabunkin? Look out, it's barking. She wants to be on. Yeah, come on. Okay, Mark Hill says the rise of big pet stores and the slow demise of mom and pop fish stores. That's kind of unfortunate, isn't it? Um, I'm not bashing big box stores. I certainly purchased from them, but yeah, it's sad to see the mom and pop stores go. I remember uh, maybe, I'd say dozens over the years have come and gone, but there were always, it seemed like, three or four in every little little city. Now, maybe one every other city. There's a super chat coming in for $2. Cheers for the fish talk. You got it. Aquarium's maintained by Andy. Cheers to you for being here. Appreciate that. Hey, look out. Is everything cool? You good, bro? Timmy didn't fall in the well, did he? Oh, man. Talk about nostalgia. We're, we're going back, aren't we? 10.51, 100 watching. We got some chum on the water. We're talking about how things have changed since we got into the hobby. You guys keep that going. Uh, we're going to move on, see what else is happening here on the page. Let's see. We got a little bit of technology on our side there. It's time for a feeding frenzy. You said it. Um, I, I was at the hospital for two days. I don't have a photograph to show you of the thumbnail that would have said no words of the fancy goldfish video. But you guys showered me with compliments. And I'll tell you, River Wife and I have had so much enjoyment with those goldfish. I hope you'll watch that video. Fancy Goldfish is the title, or that's what the thumbnail says. Show quality Fancy Goldfish, I think, is in the title. They are absolutely beautiful. Thanks again to Precious Tranquility. And she was able to source a couple of those fish for me from Living Waters Goldfish and Koi. Who's this? Who likes these? You want a treat? Come on. Come on. You got to work for a living. Get up here. Come on. Oh. Say hello to the tankers. Is that what you wanted? Okay, good girl. That's Lookie. She's on the lookout. There she, oh man, she's a good looking dog. Love that girl. Yeah, so this, uh, you guys said, I, I watched, let's see, I laughed, I cried, I watched the whole thing. Beautiful fish, beautiful tank. Love the lights, love the bowls. You had so many beautiful comments to make, and I really appreciate that. It's so encouraging to, you know, pour many hours into making a video and then you guys respond. I describe the video as the most beautiful story I've ever told with no words. There's no words. It's just kind of the story of the goldfish arriving, acclimating, getting used to the new tank, and then kind of settling in to an, an evening, an activity, uh, you know, several activities through the evening and then the lights out. I don't know, I, I felt creative that way. But the fish were the main thing, so I kept them the main thing. They are absolutely stunning. That's the truth. Royal Fish Aquatics, everybody's doing good here. Thank you so much. Fish Room Fever in the house. James, sneak in here. Yep, he sure did. Finally made it home. Welcome aboard. Uh, James, I'm bragging about my new goldfish. Man, I love those things. Recon's Aquariums. I like the name change. Good to see you. Uh, I think the bare bottom's just fine for goldfish. I think it's just fine. Uh, Precious Tranquility has been out goldfish watching again today. That was cool. Royal Fish Aquatics, the, the guppy fry are growing out. The guppies are no more. I had the worst time with those guppies. I bought them at a PetSmart during an ick outbreak. So I got them all medicated, and I had a few of them that made it through uh, the medication week, the quarantine week, but then they just they didn't 
start eating. They weren't very active. They were lethargic, and I lost them. But in the meantime, I guess I would buy five, and three or four would die, and I would take them back, and they would replace them. And this went on for several weeks, and in the process, I ended up with about 40 fry. I probably still have 35, and they're, the largest ones are just over half an inch now. I think I can see a gravid spot to sex some of the females, not getting iridescence or colors on uh, the other ones to determine if they're males or not. So that's the, the fry are growing out. Fantastic. The adults that I purchased uh, and not out of not a healthy situation that didn't make it. So that's how that's going. Uh, River Wife was someone's 100th subscriber. Thank you very much. Okay, James has been... He's not a slacker. James uh, listening on his way home. boy. Yeah, that's a good point, James. When, this information is available. It's, <laughs> it's most helpful when it's used. <laughs> All right, Candy, I, let's get the 80 likes. Let's make Candy happy. That sounds good to me. So uh, we got a feeding frenzy going on. We've got a Facebook group over there. And I asked you guys last week if we could get to 200. You, respond, uh, you responded right away. Thank you very much. Uh, we've just got some cool posts over there. It is in support of the River Life YouTube channel. It is the River Life Community Tank Live Facebook group. And I have asked that we post external links on Saturdays. Um, so if it's not a River Life uh, video, let's keep all the external links uh, posted to be on Saturday. That way they're not all over the place. We don't have a clutter. We've got them easy to find. When people want to go look at links, they're all together. And uh, we'll see how that works. And so I have started taking links down if they're not posted on Saturday. And I'll probably send you a nice note. Thanks for posting your links and be happy to have that back on Saturday. No hard feelings. Love you. See you soon. Okay. Precious Tranquility encouraging uh, us to put something on the bottom of the goldfish tank if it's bare bottom. I've heard people recommend a moss ball for them to kind of kick around. Just like... You know, just like us kids with our with our ball to kick around, bounce around. Ann Thornton's had some rough time with guppies. Well, it happens. It sure does. Yeah, it could be genes. You know, we chase our water parameters, but it could be above our pay grade, right? So you guys responded uh, like champions that you are. And we've got the Facebook group up over 200 now. So oh, what's this? We got the King of DIY, number one fan super sticker in here with Canadian Super Chat, 1399. Hello, Joey. How's it going? We're talking about what's changed in the hobby since we got started, man. I bet you could tell a story or two. Feel free to chip in there if you'd like. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah, so we we want the uh enrichment in the tank to benefit the goldfish, right? Uh, and these things, they're immediately, you know, I'm a dog guy. You saw a lookout here. They're like puppies. You just want to play with them. You talk, I, I mean, I do. Listen, I, I say you as like everyone does this. <laughs> I talk to them in a different voice, you know, like little babies. And I put my fingers on the tank. I never tap the tank, but they want to investigate. They come over. So I let them follow my finger and I trace it along the edge of the tank. It's just the coolest thing. I like being a kid again myself. I love those goldfish. Blake's Aquatic says the king is here. Susan for SLC Aquatic says Joey at the king of DIY. Jo yeah, high five Joey. Yep, thank you Joey for the super chat. Okay, so we're at about 211 guys and gals over there in the Community Fish Tank Facebook group. So if you've got uh, friends, neighbors, relatives, uh, grandmas that want to get in that Facebook group, share that link with them. I've, uh, lookout's back. You like these guys? You want to say hi again? Come here. Come on. Come here. Say hello. Yeah. Yeah. Are you jealous of the goldfish? Do they make you jealous? Huh? No? 
Brothers and sisters you've always wanted. Good. Good girl. That's where we're at on the Facebook group. And, uh, man, it's a great way to send out some information, make some new friends, get some new information, especially in between our time together here on Thursday nights and a premiere on Tuesdays. It's great filler. I love the associated Facebook page. Thanks, Candy, for posting that link. Paul Howell is in here tonight. He asks, what's my opinion on multiple water changes a week? And do I think it causes a problem with the fish? I have a 125 slightly overstocked. Yes and no. I'm about changing the water um, less often, as less often as possible. But there can be situations, you know, where it needs to be changed quite a bit. I mean, Gary Lang, I've seen videos of his. He's doing 70, 90% water changes a day. Depending on the fish, depending on, you know, what is the natural biotope for the fish. So it varies. Tim Aquatic says, hi, Rack. Been lurking while moving a bunch of my fry around the fish room. Dropping a thumbs up before I call tonight. Keep being awesome. Well, back at you, Tim Aquatics. Um, you keep being awesome and you keep adding to our catalog of information on your YouTube videos. If you guys haven't checked out TM Aquatics, I'm giving him a special shout out because I've learned from watching his videos. It's benefited me. I think if you'll check it out, you'll get a benefit there too. What else we've got going on? We're moving on. Oh, we've got the surface dwellers. That's, that's where we are. We're at the top of the water column um, for the community tank asking this question. Are there any shrimp for the surface level of the aquarium? Are there any surface dwelling shrimp? Can you guys think of any? They don't have to be uh, readily available. I guess I do want to limit it to fresh water. Fresh water shrimp for the top of the water column. Excuse me, bamboo shrimp. There, I knew someone would have an answer. Punchy pants. Pam says bamboo shrimp. Okay, so now, and if they're not at the surface, I think now that I think about those guys, you can encourage them to be at the surface because they they're like the fan feeder. I'm doing my hands like they were a fan on a shrimp uh, to kind of filter feed in the water. So if you had water flow at the top they would like to get near the water flow to fan so yeah you could get them to the surface no problem good good call pam good job yeah good night tm aquatics you're welcome thank you um someone asked how often should i vac uh i think i like a routine so i would say monthly would be a goal depending on the tank how heavily stocked it was what type of fish um, you might have to go weekly, but I, I would aim for monthly, you know, about the same time you might, uh, service a, a sponge filter. And if maybe it could be that, um, every tank is different and you just, you have to play it by ear. You've got to fill the tank out. I'd go for a month and see what happens. You may, have, you may say, hey, this gravel isn't dirty. You may say, oh, my gosh, I can't believe that's so nasty. Precious Tranquility did not see that coming. Uh, the scuds seem to like to hang out on top. How cool is that? Make a note. Scuds. Thank you, Precious Tranquility. Susan Fresh LC Aquatic says, <laughs> I got the, I got it. I got it. Okay. Punchy Pants is not the correct name of the YouTube channel. There's a YouTube channel in chat that's a wonderful, hardworking mod. It's Punchy Paints, not Punchy Pants. <laughs> Who sent me that? Was that Riverwife? Whoever it was, thank you. Thank you for setting me straight. Punchy paints. Of course it's punchy paints. 
What was I talking about? I don't even know. Yeah, that's what I said. Punchy paints. That's what I said. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pam. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we got the uh, we got the scuds and the bamboo shrimp at the top. Uh, we talked about the Facebook page growing. And uh, 81 people, if you're not in the Facebook group, Candy the Mod has posted the link. Check it out. Just check it out. Pun Life said, yeah, you read it wrong too. Yeah, I'm a bad influence. <laughs> uh, it might be Punchy Pants. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's Punchy Pants because she's an artist. She's a beautiful artist. Check out Pam's artwork. Yeah. Pam Early One. Should be a world famous artist if she's not. Okay, yeah, we're gonna do the Facebook uh, growth request tonight. Eighty two watching, check it out. It's something you want to contribute to, take part in, just watch, take a glance at every now and then. Glad to have you over there. Same rules apply. No bullying. Safe space. Lots of experience. Good people to ask a question. You might come across something humorous or informative or helpful. Feel free to share it. And we're adding external links on Saturdays. Post your links on Saturdays. Multi-tank addiction in the house. Chris is here. Moonstone KK dropping a $5 super chat. Talked an hour about dogs. Never mentioned fish. Client now leaving. I asked, by the way, have you ever seen so many fish tanks in the house? Answered, nope. <laughs> nope. Where'd you get all those tanks? Why do you need that many tanks? It's a fishy thing. I get it. Thank you very much for the super chat. Moonstone KK. All right, let's move down a level. Let's go to the mid swimmers. We're talking about shrimp tonight. And I don't know, I guess, I guess the viewer tonight, the tanker tonight that's paying attention noticed that I'm wearing the Flip Aquatics t-shirt. Okay. That's because I got an order of shrimp this week. I did. I got some shrimp out there in the fish studio, and we're going to talk about those too. And uh, so I want to know what shrimp we would consider for the, the as a mid-swimmer in the middle of the water column. Are there some freshwater shrimp that like to hang out in the middle? And then um, while we've got some of those coming in, hashtag three devices, nailed it. Way to go, Justin Bixler. Science gal's loving shrimp. She can maybe help out in this conversation. Yeah, Candy's got Flip Aquatics um, YouTube channel up there. The and uh, by the way, I, when I started watching YouTube months before I had a channel, I was watching Rob at Flip Aquatics and Corey at Aquarium Co-op, and I was learning about the platform, the people, the community, and uh, and modern tank techniques. So that was definitely a gateway. I love Rob and Amanda and all the team over there at Flip Aquatics. Wonderful people, wonderful customer service. Great to see out at these fish conventions. Nicer people you will not meet. And always uh, happy to get livestock from them. Very healthy. They like to do a 30-day quarantine before they ship. This may be a, an original shirt. American bread shrimp and fish. Uh, he, the market said, yeah, we want all those American shrimp. Rob had to start importing shrimp. So now even his imports are quarantined for 30 days before he ships. And so I had horrible weather conditions. I was at the hospital. Uh, I came home late, late at night and found the poor shrimp, of course, on the doorstep. And this, you know, the hospital visit wasn't scheduled. That's just something that happens. Um, and I ordered, I think 20 cherry shrimp, two deaths. I mean, without a delay and without horrible weather, you know, two, two deaths out of 20, not bad. And I didn't count. I'm sure he probably put a couple of extra. So it was like two, 10 packs, probably put an extra one in each one. Probably still got the full order. Not complaining. Love it. Could have been much worse, but it wasn't. It was all good. Priscilla MK Art dropping $5 to say you're awesome, sir. Keep racking. Thumbs up. Hug. Hug back at you, Priscilla. You're awesome. Thank you so much. Um, always good to see you. Love hanging out with you at the fish conventions. Your art is amazing. You guys check out Priscilla MK Art. Um, Priscilla is managing a fish store. Very 
uh, smart. If you've got a question about keeping your fish, I'd run, I'd run it by her. Definitely weigh her answer. She knows what's up. Thank you, Priscilla, for being here tonight. And did I miss a mid-swimming shrimp in the chat? Did someone come up with something? What I've come up with is just having perches uh, in the center of the tank, like those beautiful um, bonsai trees they're selling now that have kind of a narrow base and lots of perches in the center of the water column that those shrimp look cool. They look like berries or fruit hanging off of those bonsai trees. It's so cool. Yeah, the across the border shipping. I wish that was more of a thing too, and Thornton, because that would go both ways. We would all benefit if we could do that. Okay, I don't think I missed any. Yeah, the bamboo shrimp for the surface, and I guess you could also adjust the water movement to the middle of the tank to get your bamboo shrimp down there also. Um, so the video, the last time I looked, the the gold, the fancy goldfish video. I do hope you'll watch it. It is relaxing. It's meditative. The fish are beautiful. The tank is like the, the scape of my life. It's, <laughs> it is pretty to look at, even if I'm bragging. I just enjoy that tank. So check that video out if you get a chance. The last time I looked at it, it was like 300 views, something like that. Um, 72 likes. So it's pretty pretty good video, and uh, I hope it hangs around for a while and has an extended life beyond just the launch, which again was above average. Thank you guys very much that were able to make it to the postponed, the pushed premiere. I had a request from, um, I call it a request. It was more like an arm twisting from Candy and Pam, Candy Overholes and uh, is it punchy paints? Yeah, punchy paints. Uh, because I was doing a 9 a.m. Eastern time premiere, and they, you know, that's like zero dark 30 on the West. So I pushed it to 11, give everybody time to get out of bed, you know, and stretch, get a cup of coffee. And man, uh, thank you guys for being there. Both Candy and Pam were there, offered lots of encouragement. Candy said 7 a.m. is what time? <laughs> Yeah, that's that's too early I, it, it, to watch a relaxing video. That's not right. So so I pushed it, and, and we got a lot of folks in there. It was great. Um, probably that's going to be it from now on. I'm going to be doing the premieres at 11 a.m. Eastern time, and we'll hopefully get continue to have more of a, a Western attendance. It is 11.13 right now, 76 watch, and we're going to go to about 11.30 when Multi-Tank Addiction is going to take over. Chris over there at Multi-Tank Addiction got a big show lined up for us. We're all going to jump over there, help him out. But right now we're going to move down to the bottom of the tank. We're talking about bottom dwellers. What shrimp, uh, what's your preference for shrimp on the bottom of the tank? Fresh water. Now, this can be any of them. I've seen all the shrimp on the bottom. What's your favorite? Right now, I'm working with some cherry shrimp. We've got the cherry shrimp coming to a video uh, soon to you guys. Neos. There you go, Peplin Creek Aquatics. Ghost shrimp. Absolutely. You know, I've had ghost shrimp breed in a community tank before. They don't often do that. They can. But they need salt water, really. But that, it's happened. Yeah, Precious Tranquility says it's good for anyone's mental health. Dream Blues, or Blue Dreams. Yes, the Zen Ginger. Beautiful, probably my favorite. Crystal Black, beautiful. Amano, Bob Kaler's with the Amanos. They'll also eat your algae. Amano shrimp are sweet. Goldbacks. Jamie Fife says he's got breeding ghost shrimps in his beta tank. It happens. It's pretty rare. Yeah, not getting into the brackish shrimp there, the pond life. Um, mainly because I don't want to be, I don't want you guys to throw out these great ideas and then I need to set up another shrimp tank. You know what I mean? I'm trying to dial it in. What else did I see? <laughs> and Thornton had a ghost shrimp named Bert and Ernie. 
They were hilarious. Ernie got into a fight with our mystery snail named Gary. <laughs> Snuffleupagus. A Gary was also Snuffleupagus. So that's, see? See how tanks intertwine themselves into our lives? Lucky I'm out of treats. But you did good tonight. You had several. Good girl. Mantis shrimp. Ooh, the Zen ginger. Man, that is one beautiful shrimp. You know those things, they call them knuckle breakers. They can snap uh, one of their forceps and break aquarium glass. Kind of scary. What are the goldfish names? River Wife, do you remember the goldfish names? Uh, there's four of them. I want to write them down to make sure I can get them right here. And we got 1116. We got 15 minutes before we go over to multi-tank addictions. We're at the bottom of the tank. The fish studio definitely has goldfish with names. Um, I've got some community tank studio projects going on, but they're not real showy. You know what I mean? They're not real showy. Uh, breeding projects are set up. Do you guys like to follow breeding projects or is that just, yeah, been there, done that. I got this one guy and his name is, you guys yell at me if River Wife answers this question. I'm still writing. And Yeah. I have three out of four. There was a, there's an orange and white. There's an orange and white fantail that Precious Tranquility bred. It's a it's a fantail hybrid, and it's beautiful. And in the in the video, I changed the light on it several times. It glows different colors. Crazy, knock your eyes out. So I named this guy Philip Fulmer. Um, some of you guys, Kaler's Aquatics. And uh, Fish Room Fever, you'll know who, the Philip Fulmer reference. Chattanooga Ed here. I didn't see Ed come in. So uh, Philip Fulmer was a Tennessee volunteer football player. And uh, as a lineman, his team won the national championship. And he came back to coach the Tennessee Vols. And a team he coached with T. Martin as quarterback won the national championship. So he was no ed tonight. Sorry about that. So, uh, Philip Fulmer is the only NCAA, uh, player coach to have won national championships as both a player and a coach. So he's a, he's an outstanding champion in Tennessee with so much in common with my new orange and white goldfish for those reasons. The other goldfish I got from, Precious Tranquility that she bred. I think, no, maybe she got this from an importer. It was a small red and black butterfly. Just the cutest little thing. And its name is Teacup. And it's Teacup because uh, it's the smallest of the four goldfish. It's just a little, it'll grow. But right now it's the smallest. So his name's Teacup. And there's another, uh, it's a butterfly goldfish, but it's not a telescope. So it doesn't have the bug eyes. And uh, its name is Hiccup. Uh, just kind of sounds funny uh, with teacup. So we've got Philip Fulmer, Hiccup, and teacup. And then we have the large butterfly telescope that is just stunning. This is a showstopper. And so that's Spartacus. Spartacus is just the ruler of the tank and all that is in the 75 gallon. But he's a, he's a good ruler. He's a good leader. He takes care of everybody, watches over everybody. And they're just, they're so congenial. They're so friendly. Crazy. I struggled with uh, whether to be in the video, to show them interacting. So I, I decided, no, there'll definitely be another video 
So I want to do a description of all the goldfish because uh, Amanda Precious Tranquility was nice enough to send me some info about them. So I want to do a more detailed, just going to add words to the goldfish video, talk about what they are, where they came from, and show their interaction with people. Sparta! Yeah, so that's coming up. Um, and a shrimp video. So going from one extreme to the other. Um, tiny, tiny little inhabitant to huge. That's okay. Diversity, right? We like diversity. We're not afraid of that. Good deal. Okay, let's see. Moving on. 1121, 65 of you still here. Hang in there, guys. I know it's getting late here in the east. Uh, good to know, Bob. Uh-oh. Okay, we got an update on Ed's dad doing great and moved out of ICU to a room this afternoon. My heart goes out to Ed and his dad, especially tonight. Yeah, so, yeah, I hope Ed's getting to spend some time with him. What else have I missed? Uh, I got River Wife in here keeping me straight, so. Yeah, she calls Teacup Baby, that's true. She does, and um, her heart's just melted. She she definitely loves the goldfish. Her world is improved. Her life has been enhanced and enriched by having goldfish in our fish studio. Trank, that's pretty good. I like Trank. Yep, and uh, Precious Tranquility confirms the small butterfly was definitely imported. Okay, cool. Yep, got to give a shout out here to Punchy Paints who has some pearl scales. You know, the goldfish that look like they swallowed a golf ball. And hers are absolutely gorgeous. Just wonderful fish. Um, I hope you'll show us more of those, Pam. Just, I mean, the daisy rice fish. Every every uh, aquarium you have, Pam, is, is really cool. But those goldfish, mm-hmm. That's Precious Tranquility says rack, the Tosankin. What about it? What are we talking about there, Amanda? I don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's do a water change here. We got seven minutes left, 64 still watching. Let's do a water change. Let me mention this as the water change. Project Piaba Expedition Team is in country in Brazil. They left, they departed uh, the United States on the 19th and on the expedition this year is Alex of tank tested cannot wait to get some footage posted on YouTube from Alex and the project Piaba team. There is a post on the river life community tank live Facebook group of Jackie, a project Piaba volunteer explaining that there probably will not be, uh, a lot of updates from the field because they just don't have the internet connection. So I'm sure as soon as they get uh, the, the wrap up and they get on their way back, as soon as they get to an airport with Wi-Fi, we'll probably start getting some information. I don't look for much before then. I will say this. Um, Jackie also said that she was taking and learning how to use a GoPro. So I uh, fingers crossed for some Project Piaba underwater footage. I love the underwater footage from the actual native and natural biotope. Oh, I love it. And that water is so dark with the tannins. Just amazing. Yeah, so we'll keep an eye out for that. If I hear anything, I'll post it on the Facebook group uh, if I hear anything before next week. So that's going on. Moving along to aquascaping with six minutes to go tonight. Um, we talk about our buffet here in the community tank, our buffet of options. We just put ideas out there, and if we like them, we take them, we share them, we benefit from them. If we don't like them, we don't have to spit on them. No spitting. That's not cool. We just move along. That may be what the next guy likes. And so as we uh, pursue our buffet, basically we just determine – that doing it that way, offering a buffet, does have a value in our pursuit of preference. We're all free to pursue our own preference. 
And maintaining a safe space so we can have a buffet aids us. It has a value to us as we pursue our preference. And it's okay if someone prefers something besides what we prefer. So that's just the way we roll. And we also, um, I've been talking about multi-tank addiction coming up next. I've been following Chris uh, and recommending that you do the same for several weeks. I want to say uh, he was like at uh, 850 subs when we first said, hey, let's make an effort for the community tank to support multi-tank addiction and go over to his page, go to his, uh, you know, hover over by his name in the chat, go to his YouTube channel and uh, check it out. I'm going to go ahead and recommend you subscribe. Um, if you like this type of content, if you like hanging out in the community tank, I really think you're going to like multi-tank addiction. Uh, the guy's funny. He does art. He takes phone calls. He does trivia. He shares commercials, promoting other channels. Really community oriented. This is one of his original art pieces. It's a project Piaba art piece. It's available on his website you can purchase this as a print um, as a collaboration to help support project piaba and a portion of his proceeds will go to project piaba if you buy that print off of his website super great guy i looked before the stream started tonight and chris multi-tank addiction had 960 subs we're trying to get him to a thousand that's the big milestone that's where some benefits start happening for chris um, and he has an opportunity then to do different things that he can't do without a thousand subs. So let's, let's go over there right now and, and check out Chris's channel. Give him a sub, come back here. Let us know you did. If you've got some other, uh, folks in your house that may want to, that sounds good. The Zen ginger that may want to check out, uh, Chris Tokes outdoors has already been over there and he says, just now we're up to 965 we're talking about the final countdown okay with just one announcement we went from 960 to 965 35 more subs 35 more subs and this channel is is at a, a the golden milestone the 1000 i mean chris has worked hard over the years to get the 965 that doesn't happen you know because you wiggle your nose yeah, Chris says it was 944 last night. So he is jamming. He's in the final countdown. We are a community. We walk together. We help each other out. We help each other up. And so this is this is what I'm asking you to do, giving a little bit of shine to my friend Chris at Multi-Tank Addiction. I hope you'll do the same. There's a benefit for me. There's a value in helping our community grow, and tonight especially Chris. By the way, I've got plenty of these stickers. Uh, if you want to send a self-addressed stamped envelope to the River Life YouTube channel, you can get some of these, as well as the River Life stickers. Lucky you don't get to go. You're staying here. Got some Fish Room Fever action going on. Self-addressed stamped envelope, River Life stickers, Project Piaba stickers, Multi-Tank Addiction stickers, Fish Room Fever stickers, Sticker Jam. Send me a self-addressed stamped envelope. Get them right out to you. Okay. We also talked about supporting Aquatic Ness. And Aquatic Ness crossed the 1,000 mark. Thank you very much for your help. And Storm Riders Aquatics. Melvin, number one fan on FishTube. Uh, he is at 988 subs, guys. He's almost to 1,000. Storm Riders Aquatics. That's Melvin. The hashtag is going to be... flip hashtag flip as we go over to chris's in one minute um the spawn next week i'm gonna try I, you know my schedule's altered but we're gonna go for a video that is out of this world i'm going for it we're going for a video that is out of this world it'll be premiering on tuesday everything works out we're going to turn off the lights here with a minute to go. Thank you guys so much for showing up. Uh, good to see all of you guys, all the new people that are here. Welcome. If, you, if it's your first time in the tank, I hope you'll come back. I hope you feel welcome. You like the content that's going on and you'll contribute in the future. Big E support group. Hey, good to see you. Till then, you guys, I want you to drink often and drink deep from the cup of encouragement 
Stay in the tank. Get your fish on. Until next time, why don't you get out there and see it, love it, and live it. And I'll catch you on the next one. Let's go over to multi-tank addiction. I'll see you there.